All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about and hopefully doing kind of my final response video for my truck gun. Now, like I said in previous videos, I talked about why I went over to the Lee Enfield jungle carbine here showing, but I also kind of made making this video as a response because I got a lot of questions and rightfully so as to why in you know 2024 I didn't choose to go with something a little bit more modern. So I certainly have modern rifles, modern fighting rifles as I think some people would say and this is going to be the one that I'm going to use as an example because I think this is actually the most well fitting uh, example. A lot of people ask you know, like why aren't I running AR-15s, AKs um, and honestly the FAL would probably be one of the best but to answer this question, we got to go back to essentially what I design or kind of what the POU, the philosophy of use for a truck gun, at least for my use case is. And for this video and for this response, the most applicable choices or reasons why um, I chose this particular truck gun and other truck guns in the past, such as the 94 um, goes back to first off what I wanted for a truck gun was something that has or fires a full on rifle caliber. So what this means is it disqualifies any kind of PCCs that are pistol caliber carbines, you know, so anything that's a, you know, 44, 357 Magnum, uh, nine mil, anything like that is disqualified for me personally. Now, some people's truck guns are those calibers and there's nothing inherently wrong with them for certain use applications. But once again, for me, I wanted something that could go toe to toe with bears very quickly and dispatch them very easily. So, you know, there are a number of um, solid choices here. Things such as you know, 12 gauge shotguns are also decent, but I like the idea of a rifle a little bit more. So like I said, I wanted a full on rifle caliber um, carbine. And so something like quite literally a jungle carbine, things like the Winchester 94 are rifle caliber carbines. So they don't get too much love, but you know, like there is actual rifle caliber carbines and you're looking at a couple examples of them here. So <clears throat> that's the first thing for me. It has to be full rifle caliber and it needs to be handy. The next thing is, like I said, it does need to be handy. So that means it needs to be reasonably lightweight and reasonably wieldy. Now the up until this point with rifle calibers and being handy, some people be like, well, this FNFAL also fits into those roles, especially, and I keep collapsing the stock here or folding the stock, sorry, so that you guys can see just how handy this little package is. Honestly, this guy with its stock folded is very compact. So why didn't I choose something like this? Well, it goes back to um, the last kind of, uh, applicable feature that I wanted from a rifle for a truck gun and that is that it needs to be that it needs to be very streamlined. Now what do I mean by this? That's exactly why I have this guy here. So when you look at this um, FAL right here, you will notice that this is a very compact package, very compact, you know, super handy, you know, as far as it goes, if you needed to pull this out and, you know, potentially get it into action, very handy, very easy. But the downsides to this is it's not very streamlined. You'll notice that on the top, you have an optic hanging off on the bottom. Obviously you have a magazine hanging off, you have a pistol grip, you have a stock, all of these are catching points. Um, and so if you're trying to withdraw this gun from a truck, if you're trying to withdraw it from a tent, if you're trying to withdraw this, like pull it around or through or, you know, out of an area, um, there's a lot of points on this gun right here that can be caught. And because of that, it is not a very streamlined gun. So while it is true, this gun is very compact and very handy, and of course, once again, it fires a rifle caliber in a round, obviously the 308 um, or 762 by 51, you know, very handy cartridge um, for sure. Like very, very well performing round. It is not very streamlined. And there's actually with most modern fighting rifles, a lot of catch points, things like charging handles and skin magazines, pistol grips, stocks, optics, um, things like that, that will impede your way of actually being able to withdraw a gun. Now on the flip side, when you look at something like this jungle carbine, you'll notice it too has a magazine. This magazine is completely rounded over. There's no hard abrupt points on it and it's very tucked in close to the gun. Now that's also due to the fact that it's a 10 round magazine as opposed to a 30 round magazine, but it's very streamlined and there's not much to catch on. And looking at this gun as a whole, outside of the bolt over here and the magazine that's pretty well rounded, in fact, the 
the bolt's pretty well rounded too. There's not really a lot of catching points on this gun. And the same can definitely be said about the Winchester 94 here. Maybe you could say the hammer is a little bit of a catching point, the hammer spur. But outside of that, there's really not a lot that if you're trying to withdraw this gun from some place, um, that's going to get caught up. You know, your sights are very low profile and uh, especially that hooded front sight, you know, there's not like just a little sight spur sticking up. It's going to round over whatever you're trying to withdraw it from. And of course, these guns were designed to be put into uh, gun scabbards and holsters. In fact, realistically, both of these firearms were designed to be put in scabbards or holsters um, so that you could have them, whether you're mounted on horseback or whether you're mounted on some kind of um, mechanized um, device, you could withdraw them. So. These guns are a lot more streamlined and designed to have fewer catching points or snag points, whereas modern fighting rifles, obviously, the idea and premise has changed to them. So there are a lot more you know, catch points potentially on this gun if you try to withdraw it from a place, whether it's you know collapsed or whether the stock's folded like this or whether the stock's out like this, you know, there's a lot more um, things that can be caught up. And so, what this means is if you do use something like this as a truck gun, you either have to remove catch points such as the magazine, you have to remove things like the optics, you have to remove things that could potentially you know, get snagged on things. But the issue there in lies that when you start taking out things like the magazine so that it's not a possible snagging point, well, then you don't have the ammunition in your gun, right? So at most you can have one round in the chamber, then you need to grab your magazine, you know, and in the heat of the moment, load it, and then get it ready to shoot, right? So that for me has never really sat well because for me, I want something that I don't have to think about. I can just pull it out, you know, get it ready, and then shoot, right? It's something that I don't have to think about doing. It's just something that can be done. And so for me, like I said, I like some a firearm that's very streamlined so it can be pulled out without thinking and made ready very fast. And so for me, that's why modern rifles, whether it's an AK, an AR, an FAL is the example here, um, I have refused to choose them as a, a modern um, truck gun in my opinion. Now, in addition to this too, the other thing and the other reason why I don't really choose something like a modern fighting rifle as this option is like other people have pointed out in comments, I don't really have a truck gun because it's a doomsday prep or that I think it's like a bug out rifle. Certainly if I was in a post-apocalyptic situation and needed to cross, you know, town in, you know, like a zombie apocalypse, obviously I would bring something like a fighting rifle in those types of instances and situations, um, as outlandish as they may be, you know, in those types of situations, a truck gun would change its roles. I also <clears throat> wouldn't have it just, you know, sitting in the back with the camping gear, probably have it closer to me in case I need to actually use it. And so for me, you know, um, there are different applications in times where something like this could be useful, but in this type of application for wilderness, um, you know, bear defense and stuff like that, it is not as useful. And so therefore it is, you know, like I said, all of the you know, catching points become more of a liability than, you know, the additional 20 rounds in the magazine of hard hitting 308. So yeah, in my opinion, that is essentially why I don't use modern rifles for this task. And hopefully you guys have enjoyed this kind of breakdown and thought process. Cause like I said, I've had multiple truck guns over the course of my time because I do spend a lot of time outdoors and I like to have the capability to be able to defend myself from, you know, whatever um, types of animals might walk in in the middle of the night and need to be dealt with. So these are the types of guns, things like the 94 and the jungle carbine are the types of guns that I will continue to choose because they fit the roles and goals um, most properly. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video as always. God bless. And I'm out.